Sean, first, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Uh, we're here at Casa Loma, and this is this is home for you right now, man. This is something that you have been doing for the last couple of years, and it's something that has grown soul in the city. Congratulations, and did you ever think that this would become such a staple point in the city? Uh, you know what? It was. It's an interesting thing. Um, you know, Nick DiDonato and my manager, Jeffrey Latimer, they came up with this idea. They told me about it and I was like, yeah, that could definitely work. But I, I never really envisioned exactly how beautiful the night would be, how magical it would be, how special it would be for people um, until that first night when we actually did it, you know, three years ago. And after that, I was like, wow, this could really turn into something special. And it has, you know, we've grown from 150 people to now it's a thousand people a night that are coming out on when it's beautiful out. And, um, you know, it's only getting bigger. That's the crazy part. It's only getting bigger. For folks who have never been part of Soul in the City, explain exactly what it is, because this is probably one of the most elegant and so much fun type of events that could happen again in this yeah. city. It's a... Uh, Soul in the City. It's at a beautiful Casa Loma, um, and it's outside in their beautiful gardens. And we are here in their pavilion uh, right now, uh, in a glass pavilion. So we seats about 400 people. The, you know, the garden holds as many people as it can possibly hold. Uh, they serve dinner. They serve drinks. I've got an eight-piece band, and we throw down soul classics. We throw down Sean Jones originals, and I bring special guests up on stage. We've had Jackie Richardson, Alan Frew. We've had Eric Benet come all the way from L.A., uh, Stacey Kay this year. Um, tonight we have Jordan Alexander, uh, Natasha Waterman, and Myrna Sands. I know these names. There's just so many of them. Uh, and we just we just throw down, man, and it's really a beautiful night. By the end of the night, everybody is inside of this tent, and they're all dancing, and it turns into this like huge just love fest with music and great vibes. And I don't know, everyone just leaves smiling. When you talked about the acts. These are acts who are established performers, but also acts that maybe a lot of people don't yes. know. How does it feel giving that stage, knowing that in Toronto lately we've been losing those stages for those artists? Yeah, we've been losing uh, music venues for quite some time now, and this year it's actually gotten really bad. Um, and just, you know, it was hard for young artists to get a, a shot anywhere to get in front of people. Um, and now it's even, it's that much harder. So to have a... a a platform like this to invite young artists to actually do their thing and give them a voice, give them, give them some, you know, let people see what they can do. It's a, it's a beautiful thing, and I, I feel really proud of that. Like that is one of the most important things to me that I've been able to do. We've taken a lot of uh, ladies from Honey Jam actually, and uh, you know, like Jordan, uh, who's performing tonight, uh, Nephi, who we've had, Charmy Deller, um, absolutely amazing talent that. Uh, normally probably wouldn't get in front of a crowd like this, but we've given them a chance to do so, and I, I feel really good about that. The other thing that's feeling good, too, is the band that is behind you, who's getting ready to rehearse right now. Um, what These guys know how to throw down at night. They know how to play elegance, but at the same time, when the R&B and the funk and the soul and the rock and everything else comes in, they know how to do it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've got... I've got some of the best musicians in the country, I believe, you know, uh, playing behind me. They believe in what it is that we're doing. They believe in the night. And they, they genuinely enjoy coming here and playing, you know. And these are guys that, you know, I want, like, Michael Shan just came back from tour for uh, Party Next Door, right? He just played for 40,000 people in Surrey, B.C. And his email last night was, guys, I can't wait for tomorrow. I can't wait for tomorrow. After playing for 40,000 people in B.C., this guy... An amazing, immaculate, you know, musician just loves coming here and just the vibes that this place gives. So that that speaks volumes to uh, to what we're bringing on every single night. What has this done for you? I mean, you're a Juno Award winner. You were part of a, a Juno Award R&B group. You became a soloist. You started to do anything. I mean, one thing I don't see you doing enough, man, you know how to play instruments. You don't do that in this. Like, what has this done for you, though? And yeah, when are we going to see you play more instruments? Well, you know, last year I pulled out the guitar. I pulled it out and I was playing I was playing a bit. And we're going to do a little bit more of that, you know, as things progress into the summer. Um, but for me, I mean, it's just giving me a huge platform. People you know, understand who, who I am now. But there's also, there were some naysayers as well, you know. I've been in this industry for quite some time and you know, most of the times you only get a chance. You get one shot and after that, you're, you're pretty much done. And when in essence, you know, broke up after we, you know, won the Juno, a lot of people were like, ah, well, 
what can Sean do? I mean, Sean's not part of a group, so can he really do anything on his own? And it took some time and some convincing, but, you know, like I said, you know, Nick Donato believed in me. My manager, Jeffrey Latimer, who manages the Canadian Tenors, believed in me. And, uh, and we are showing improving. So I'm a Scorpio. And, you know, I sometimes I like to say, I told you so. <laughs> and I told you so. You do, you do it every Monday here. Yes. Um, and I've seen people, when the show's over, they actually get mad when the show's over because they want more. Yeah, yeah, man. We got to kick people out of here. Like, we have to turn off the music at 10 o'clock. That's it. So, you know, we're, we're on a time crunch. But people still hang around because the vibes are great, man. You know, they, I can't explain it anything better than that. Yeah, because your selection of music, it could still be a, I mean, you do the R&B and soul and everything else, but it could be a rock song that you reinterpret. You do a lot of reinterpretation. Absolutely. This year we included um, the Guess Who. This year we included the band. This year we included David Bowie. We included Wham! I mean, these aren't normal things that you would see at a soul per se show, but that's not what it's about. It's about great music and how we deliver it. And yeah. So, so you have this busy schedule, and then I hear about you putting music to a soundtrack of a movie that just came out recently. When do you have time doing all that stuff? Oh, listen, man. Uh, Sons to the Grave. I had written that song with, with Michael, actually, and his fiance Miku many years ago, actually, and it just so happened that it fit the movie. At the And Sasha Stoltz and her mom, Lynn Stoltz, they gave me a call at the right time. Everything just worked out. So that's an amazing thing. Like, I... To have a movie, to have a, a song in a movie is unbelievable. To like hear your, to hear your creation on a big screen is unbelievable. So that's been great. But I mean, you know, this is what I do. And and when I'm whether I'm driving, whether I'm sitting here waiting for you know everybody to warm up and get ready, there are songs rolling through my head. And I, I in my backpack, there's always my computer and a little bit of recording you know, gear so that I can just start messing around and playing around and then you know, just head to the studio, which we're headed back into the studio. I was just gonna ask. We are headed back into the studio shortly. There will be some sort of release in January, February of next year. A Little bit of a different sound than what you've normally heard from uh, Sean Jones. Uh, we've been messing around with like a Motown revival thing for quite some time now, but you know, um, you just want to change sometimes, you know, and uh, and so I've got some some new ideas that are that are kind of popping in my head. We put down a couple of them actually, so it's going to be fun. Any chance that there could be Sean Jones live since we have this going on here on a DVD recording something? You know what? Uh, we were working on a couple things. I mean, this, you know, there's so so much potential here. There's so much potential for things that can happen. And even there was a crossover this year with Sean Jones, uh, Soul in the City, and Symphony in the Gardens, which happens on Tuesday nights here at Casa Loma. So me and the Toronto Concert Orchestra, uh, we got together and I did one song with them. But next year we're looking to do an entire night of Sean Jones and the Toronto Concert Orchestra doing Motown type stuff, doing classics, doing Sean Jones originals. Like imagine that. An orchestra, the band, myself, maybe bring in some special guests to do some stuff and film that. No, what you're gonna have to film are the people outside trying to get in because there's gonna be a lineup going from St. Clair all the way here. Look, I know you got to get back to rehearse, and I know you got your people need to rehearse. But before we go, what advice can you give people who are trying to follow their dreams? Because man, you've hit the ups, the downs, the bumps. But this is proof that dreams can come true. Yeah, you just gotta you gotta stick in it, and you gotta love it. I mean, if you love what you do, then just keep on doing it. You know, the funny thing is, I've had so many times where I I question, is this it? Am I done now? You know, and for whatever reason, something happens. The universe, God, whoever you want to say it is, opens a door and it just keeps me going just a little bit further. And you find that that's, that's what will happen. Just don't give up. Just don't give up. Just believe that it will start to work itself out. It's not going to happen quickly, but it will start to work itself out. Website, Twitter, all that. Where do we go to find out everything? Sean Jones TV is the website. Sean Jones Music is my Instagram and my Twitter. And my Sean Jones is the Facebook. So you can find me anywhere. And just so we know, too, it runs until? 
August 28th, Monday nights, starts at 7.30, ends at 10 o'clock. Nice early evening. You can bring the lady. You can bring just yourself because there's beautiful ladies that show up. There are handsome guys that show up. Everyone is dressed nice. Bring the kids. I see lots of people bringing their kids. This is a family show. I don't do nothing crazy. <laughs> My friend, thank you so much for the interview. Thank you very much, Rudy.